Welcome to the third and final episode of my dashboard rebuild. I know it looks like this was a huge project and took a long time. It took 26 days for me to complete it, but it's not really that big a job. Some days I only did an hour's work on it, sometimes even less. You can tell from the video clips that there wasn't much work done on some days. Some days it was just a matter of putting a coat of play coat on and going away to the next day so it could dry and I could sand it back. Not a lot of work there, just a lot of time to get it done because while I'm waiting for a bog to dry or, or resin to dry or play coat to dry before I can do the next stage. So it was just uh, an hour or so after work and even on the weekends I only did a couple of hours work on it because of letting things dry. I had lots of other jobs going on on the boat at the time. So I was busy but this particular job didn't take all that long. Probably all up had I been able to go through it all at once, I guess probably 40 hours, so about a week's work all told, but it did take me four weeks to get it done. So let's roll the video on the finish of it. I know I said I wasn't going to show any more fiberglass layups because they're all the same, but this one's a larger area so it's a little bit different, so I thought I'd just show this one. And you'll notice I'm using a roller to spread out the initial layer of polyester resin before I put the fiberglass uh, cloth down. And that's just for speed. It wastes a bit of resin because the, the roller soaks up a lot of it. But speed is also important because you've only got a small amount of working time once you catalyse the resin. And you don't want to waste it unnecessarily. So whenever I'm working with a larger area, I always try to use a roller. Really, when you're doing a larger area where you need multiple pots of resin mixed, it's a good idea if you can have a second person around to catalyse the resin for you so that you don't end up in a situation where your roll is going hard and you haven't finished. Going around this really sharp corner is going to be a problem. I might have to patch that after. It doesn't come out very well. I've got it all glassed up now, I just brought it down to test fit it to make sure it hadn't pulled out of shape too much. And it's not too bad, it has pulled a little bit, there's a bit of a gap there, a little bit of a gap back there. By the time I give it a little bit of a, a sand up and a bit of a grind here and there, I think it'll almost fit back in the way it was. What little bit of gap that's left won't be too hard to fill with bog, so at this point I've still got to do this close this section in so I've got to go and make the piece for that I've still got to make a piece to mount the radio in down there I'll do that and once I get them made um, I can bring this down and start glassing it in I'm just making this side piece here to go and cover up the gap where that goes it'll meet back in with the side of the boat that's the piece where the remote goes in. Now I've glassed the inside of it because I can't get to the inside of it afterwards. I put some just patches of glass on the outside and the reason I did it that way was that I had to have it all clamped in place and I couldn't get to the edges of it. And I needed to hold it securely so that I could take it off and glass the inside. So that's why I got it all patchy. I'm going to have to do something about evening that up, put some more patches on it and try and level it off a little bit so that I can sand it back and bog it and get it nice and smooth. But now I'm going to glue it in there like that. I didn't video doing this because it was just so hard. As with everything on the boat, it was a matter of making a pattern out of cardboard rather than measuring anything. I just had to sit there and keep trimming up the cardboard until it fit right and then came and cut the ply off that. Again, there's no plans for any of this. All these had to be uh, adjusted to fit the actual boat. So no, no plans available for this, but hopefully if you decide to do the job, it'll give you some ideas of how you've got to go about it. I had hoped that I wouldn't have to take this steering wheel off, but in order to get a jigsaw in to make the cutouts that I need to make, or save us all, preferably, I'm going to have to take it off. It's either that or cut it from the backside and 
Uh, that doesn't really appeal either, so... I'm going to have to do something about getting it off. I'll see how it goes. I've got to take these off by the looks of it, and that should expose a nut underneath. Hopefully it'll pull off easy. Well, that was a pleasant and unexpected surprise. The steering wheel's actually held on by these bolts that were around here. Uh, they're spaced evenly six. I just put them back in the random holes just so I don't lose them. And the nuts in there, I don't need to take that section off. So that made the job really, really easy. I do a lot of this in your fiberglassing. I'm about to bog up the low spots and don't have to do it at this stage. It's just a matter of when it's convenient to get it done. I've got a fairly loose bog here. I'm going to catalyze it as a fairly hot one. That should catalyze up fairly hot. You've got to mix it all in and make sure you do mix it all. Okay, once it's mixed enough, get it on. And what you want to do is spread it out, making sure you get all the low spots covered so that you can sand it back and end up with a nice smooth job ready to paint or whether you use play coat or gel coat, doesn't matter. You still want a nice smooth surface to paint on. But in this case, because I used such a variety of uh, little bits of fiberglass, I'm actually wanting to smooth it off so that I can get some more glass on it. I've seen the professionals put on a heavy coat of bog and sand it back and it's just right. I'm not that good. I find it's better if I take more time, do two or three layers of bog on it, and then I'll get it sanded back the way I want it. The other thing about putting a heavy coat of bog on is if it shrinks a bit while it's drying, you end up with pulling your job out of shape. So light coats of bog I find are much easier to work with. That's already starting to go off. That's good. I'll just have a quick clean up and then I'll put that out in the sun so I can dry quickly. I think another coat will do this. You can see I'm down to the fiberglass here, through there, 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 down here a bit. And the only really low spots I've got are these here where the sander hasn't touched it. So I've just got to go through and fill these really low spots and I'll put a nice radius on this because that hasn't gone all that well on the last radius I did. Or actually it did go, the last radius I did did go well but i put some glass over it since then and it's roughened it up a bit, so I'll put that radius back and just cover those, and I think once that dries that will be good enough to glass over and finish off the glassing on it and of course this time when I glass over I'll go across this piece and finish that off as well I've got the bracket where I'm going to mount the VHF radio bogged in place some of it's still wet and setting. I've got to glass over that. I'll glass over it once I get all this sorted out up here and get the um, dashboard in. I'll just glass that all in one piece. Just all down there, round and down. I haven't cut the hole for the radio yet because I'm going to drill the poor holes, the poor corner holes. And I need this ply to hold the hole saw straight while I drill through into the fiberglass behind it. Alright, well there it is, sat in, ready to be fixed in. There's a few little gaps here and around here. A little bit bigger one there. And a fair sized one there. But that's not a worry at all, because that, my friends, is why they invented bog. And we'll fair that in really nicely, you won't even notice that. Beautiful. I've got the bog going on. It's still, still too wet to sand, of course. This hour of the day, it probably needs to go overnight, but I've got it all fed in. All around, down there, in along the there. Just need to patch out a little bit, didn't get done real well. That's pretty good, good sand and that should be ready to do. Up there and back to the start, so she's all in place. I'm 
Well, there you go. I've got the outside glassed in now. Put a layer of glass down along there. Got this all glassed in around here, down there, all around this outside here. So that was today's effort. Plus, I ground this where it was sticking through a little bit. The bog had come through a little bit, so that's all ground. I'll put bog on that in the morning. It's getting a bit late to be bogging now. I've just got a little bit of sanding left to do here. A bit of a high spot just there I need to take down. Yeah, so everything's sanded back, ready to put the placate on it now. I've got to put a little bit of bog on it to fix up some low spots. I've got a, a little dip here. You, you might probably can't see it in the video, but if I run my hand over it, I can feel there's a little dip there. So I'm just going to fill that with bog. There's a little bit of a little bit of a rough area there. I'll put a little bit of bog over that, another bit there. You've got to rub your hand over it to feel where your problem areas are. This is really good up here. A little bit of a problem area down here. So a bit of bog will fix all that. And then it's just a matter of putting the play coat on. And the outside of it is then finished. I've sanded off the bog. It's pretty rough sand, but that doesn't matter. Breaking open a new tin of acetone just to give it a wipe down with that now to get the get the dust off of it and any grease that might be there on the on the older gel coat. There we go, that should do it. The other thing we need to do is to mask up the bits we don't want to get any resin on, which is pretty much out there where the windscreen goes. <laughs> It's all masked up, I need to go and cut myself some fiberglass to go over this. Right, I've gone through it now and put on the last bits of uh, bog that I needed to get the really low pieces. You can see that brighter red colour there where the sander hasn't touched it. It's still a little bit low, but that'll fill up with the flow coat. That's only a tiny amount done the same all around the outside here everything's ready I've given the gel coat a sand out to where I'm going to go I'm going to put a masking tape all around this so that the play coat doesn't get where I don't want it because I suspect the play coat's going to be a slightly different colour so anyway I'll mask it up and I'll take a picture of the bit I've masked up you can see what I've done there there it is all masked up I'm going to paint everything inside the blue masking tape Hopefully the colour won't be too far off. First coat on, what I'm doing for these initial undercoats, if you will, is I'm using some resin for that, and I'm just mixing in some uh, white pigment paste into that. That's not as good as a flow coat, but it's going to be a lot cheaper, and uh, it will help cover those dark patches where the bog is. Now that's the main reason I'm doing it, to cover up those dark patches where the bog is with a minimal number of placates, because I haven't got a lot of placate left, I'd have to go out and buy some more. I'm trying to avoid that. The other thing is, I tried to avoid going over the masking tape for these first couple of coats. I splashed over it in a couple of spots, not many. Reason being, I don't want to have to pull the masking tape and put it back on as the paint dries, because the idea is to get it off before it dries, of course. I've had two coats of pigmented resin now. I've had to take the masking tape off before I finished it because its plans haven't gone real well. It's been a dull, coldish day. The resin hasn't gone off as quickly as it should have. So I am left with having to finish this tomorrow. I had hoped to get all the coats on today. Then I could work on the interior tomorrow and have it finished. But it's not to be. I'm going to have to paint it tomorrow which means I'm going to have to think long and hard about how I do the grinding on the inside I'll probably do that first and then clean all the dust off so I can paint it because at least that way I can alternate between painting the outside and glassing the inside then I've just got left to paint the inside after I give it a sand um, Thursday I should be able to get all this uh, drop cloth out of here and start doing a clean up
to masking tape off before it fully dries. For those of you that don't know, taking masking tape or paint, the object is to let the paint dry enough that the paint won't run when you take the masking tape off, which means it's usually got a skin on the surface. So you need to peel the masking tape off and pull it at such an angle that it cuts the skin on the paint without actually pulling the paint up. If you leave it too long, you either risk having the masking tape stuck there under dried paint or pulling the paint up where you want it left behind because the skin's got too thick and hard. It's a little bit different with flow coat or gel coat or anything like that because that dries really hard. So that'll trap your masking tape in there if you don't get it right. You have to watch it and get that masking tape off at just the right time. I don't know how well this is going to work for showing you what I'm doing here. Notice the get up, the uh, disposable rain coat, shower cap. Trust me, if you're glassing overhead, you want this stuff on. So, anyway, I've got some chop strand mat laid out on bits of alcohol, as you hope you can see that there. The idea is to wet them out on the alcohol and then lift the alcohol up, stick them up where they are, easy the alcohol off as I roll them on. There are better ways to do it, like you could lay up your whole stack of fiberglass on the alcohol. Once you've got it all laid up, then move it up there and stick it on. Uh, that is a better way to do it, except that I've got such an odd shape here, I've got to do it in small sections, so I'm finding it easier to cut small bits and put them on. I've already got some up there, as you might be able to tell from the video, I'm not sure you'll see it. Anyway, on with the show. I look funny in this get up, I know. Even I laugh at me in the camera there. There's not many jobs I find on the boat. Working on a boat more distasteful than glassing upside down. I think that pretty much takes the cake for me. Just giving it a good layering of resin here to help the glass stick when I start to put it up. I want some resin on the job, otherwise it's too hard to wet through the glass to get it there. Now back to this one. Just make sure I get the uh, chop strand mat all wet through, otherwise it'll be hard to get the stick up there. That's all there is to it. The worst parts of drips come down and believe me if you don't have a shower cap or something similar on your head you'll end up with a blade one just to get rid of it and be thankful for it. And the other thing about glassing upside down is I always end up using too much resin in that uh, because I just sort of find resin is your friend. You've got plenty of resin in there. It tends to stick on there easier and be easier to roll down. Only catalyze as much as you can use uh, before it goes off. So I find about 100 mils is fine for this amount of work. This is where you need a second person to help you. Uh, if you're running out of resin, they can catalyze it while you're busy. Uh, working the remainder of what you've got left. Now, it could be worse this job. I did one when we built the big boat. I had to crawl in through the crawl space uh, under the side deck, between the side deck and the inside wall of the cabin. And it was so tight, I was, thin, I was thinner then too by the way, but it was so tight that I had to put my arms up above my head before I got in there because I couldn't move my arms uh, from my side to above my head. It was there, it was so tight. I had to take the uh, resin, the glass, everything, push it ahead of me, crawl down there, glass it in upside down, and then wriggle my way back out. And 
tell you what, I wasn't claustrophobic before I did that job, but I think I, I think it must have made me a bit claustrophobic because I dread the thought of going into anywhere like that again. Got stuck for a little while. I was wondering how I was going to get out. I had to wriggle around and find a, a way where I could move to get out. Uh, took me a few minutes and I was sort of wondering if, uh, if I might have had to cut, cut the thing open to get me out at one point. <laughs> Some blokes will tell you that better for a resin uh, fiberglass up in big layers. I disagree because the whole concept of the fiberglass is that the resin transmits the uh, load to the individual fibres of glass and from there the fibres take up the load and in my way of thinking that means that it uh, doesn't matter whether you've got a big piece or a small piece, the load's still going to be distributed by the resin into all the fibres. Look at chop strand mat, that's just a series of really small fibres. The resin uh, transfers the load into all of them and it becomes strong. So cutting this cloth into smaller chunks so that's easier to put on, I don't think makes any real difference. Now, if you're in an aerospace industry and you're trying to get the best out of an aircraft, uh, it might make a difference then. You might want to make sure you've got continuous uh, strands, but for this sort of job, I don't think it matters. Mine's it just the sanding. That's the sanding left, and the painting. I have to give the inside of it a bit of a paint as well. A little bit of wasted resin, not too much. Um, I'm good with that. Now, I have to get out here and have a clean up. I'm being very pedantic about the uh, finish on the locate wasn't happy with the orange peel of the roll of left behind, so I've gone over it with a brush with a fairly heavy coat and I'm going to sand that back and see how that comes up. Might need another coat and if it does well, so be it. Put me behind another day, but I want it to look right. So next job, once everything's dry, is to cut the holes for the instruments and then I'll uh, the last placate if it needs to be done again and then I can start screwing everything back in. I've got all the holes drilled in there for the instruments now. I've still got a couple of holes to do for things like the USB charging ports. I haven't quite decided where they're going to go yet. I'll mount the instruments first, uh, wire them up and then decide I think. I've uh, got all the final paint on, needs a, a light sand and a bit of a polish yet, and then I can mount the instruments. Oh, I've got to finish painting the inside too. I've given a, a sort of an undercoat with the leftover white paint I had when I did the final on the outside, but I'm going to put a little bit of black with it and make it a lightish grey. I think that's about as close as I can come to the original colour, and it'll have to do. So I've given all this a final sand and it's pretty good. There's just a couple of little spots there that I can feel with my fingertips, but I'm going to pass it at that. I could spend another couple of days sanding it, but I'm not going to. By the time I get a polish on it, it shouldn't look too bad. So now I can put the instruments in. I've got the uh, tachometer and the speed and fuel gauges in. <laughs> I've got some of the instruments mounted, but it's getting too dark to do any more, so I'll have to call it quits at this. I 
Well, there it is, all the instruments are in place with the exception of the MFD, which I might have to wait up to another month for. Not thrilled about that. Well, not all the instruments actually. I've still got the Hummingbird I'm keeping to put that back, but uh, yeah, all the instrument instruments, non MFD instruments, are mounted. I've moved everything around a lot and I'm quite happy with the design. Once I get on the water with it all functional, I'll do a video on that and just point out all the features of it. And there we are, steering wheel back on, instruments mounted. Just got to wire everything up in behind now. And that's it, job done. I think I said in the introduction to the video that it took 26 days. In fact, it took 27 days by the time I put the boat back together because I had the windscreen to put back on, things like that. Gave the new plocator a final polish. I've still got to put a little racing stripe down the join between the new play coat and the old gel coat because the colour just doesn't quite match and the racing stripe will sort of blend it a little bit better, I think. But other than that, I'm really happy with the job. I replaced the switch panels because the original switch panels in the baseboards only had, I think it was four switches on each. I've got six switches on each now because I was a bit short on switches. I overnight a lot, so I like to be able to shut down even the standby power on some units, just to make sure the batteries are fine for the morning, and keep the anchor light going all night, of course. Anyway, that's it. It is possible to do this DIY, but I really think it's a good idea if you have some experience in fiberglassing first. If you haven't got any experience in it, have some practice, and decide if it's something you can do. Otherwise, you're probably better off going to a professional fiberglass place and getting them to do it. Anyway, that's it. I've now got to wait for anything up to a month to get my new MFD. While I'm waiting on that, I do hope to get out and do a little bit of fishing around the bay, with luck and good weather, of course. I'll come back and do some videos on all this new equipment I've got in the boat, show you how it works, have a talk about it, once I get it all on the water and working properly. Until then... Good fishing.